This lecture will introduce you to life in the oceans. There is no space in the oceans that is not inhabited by life. So life even occurs several hundred meters down below in the deep ocean sediments. That's the deep biosphere. It occurs very close to uh, hot hydrothermal vents that are over 100 centigrade <coughs> uh, degree hot uh, and come from the Earth's interior loaded with uh, toxic heavy metals. It occurs in Antarctic extremely cold regions uh, and it occurs uh, in very <coughs> saline and warm tropical seas. The oceans are by far the largest ecosystem on Earth and they are three-dimensional in contrast to the two dimensions on land. About half of the globe is covered by ocean that is more than three kilometers deep in addition to the Earth being a blue planet covered by more than 70% with ocean waters. Much of the ocean looks like this. It's pitch black since the, ocean sun, uh, since the sunlight only penetrates the ocean uh, down to a few hundred meters even in the clearest ocean waters in the Sargasso Sea. Since many um, of the ocean floor is very far away from the surface, we only have a very incomplete picture of the deep ocean and it's uh, sometimes said that it's less known and less uh, discovered than the moon's surface. And in these very deep areas we find organisms adapted to extremely high pressure up to one metric ton per centimeter square and they need to be adapted to extreme food shortage since all of life down there depends on the rain of particles from the upper ocean area with the only exception of hydrothermal vents. They are oases in an otherwise very very nutrient poor but nevertheless biologically um, very diverse uh, life community in the deep oceans. The evolution of life and the evolution of the biosphere, so of the chemistry and of the geology of our planet, are very intimately related. Organisms channel six major elements and several trace elements through their bodies. So we are composed mainly out of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, nitrogen and sulfur. Um, and the, the, the cycles of those elements are determined and partly regulated by life. Ocean life had sometimes a very dramatic effect on the course of geological and biogeochemical evolution of our Earth. And probably one of the most dramatic examples is the evolutionary invention of a photosynthesis type that produces oxygen and uses water to take the hydrogen to reduce CO2 to make up organic molecules. That's most of the photosynthesis we see today in green plants. This process was invented about two billion years ago and when that happened suddenly the uh, water contained dissolved oxygen which also diffused into the atmosphere. This then made the atmosphere oxygenic, oxidizing with very very dramatic consequences for geology. So the diversity of minerals was enhanced uh, dramatically and also the weathering of rock began which then was one of the preconditions that soils can form and that uh, erosion uh, also increased dramatically. A second example where we see a very tight link linkage between geochemistry and geology is the feature of biogenic calcification in marine life which you all know. You find mussel shells <coughs> and snails uh, along the shoreline, you know maybe that sea urchins um, and barnacles have calcified housings. You have certainly uh, heard of corals where the polyps build their massive stocks out of biogenically produced um, calcite or aragonite. And this process is so effective how mountain regions are made up by uh, biologically derived um, stones for example, the, um, uh, the Dolomites in the Alps, they, they are entirely made up by former marine seafloor that has been then solidified and lifted up by tectonic movements. The ocean environment and its ecosystems are very different uh, to many features on land. For example, in the oceans, the food chain starts very tiny with microscopically small plants, so-called phytoplankton. And compare this to land where the plants are shrubs or grasses 
or even trees that can be several tens of meters high. Uh, that has the consequence that food chains are usually quite long in particular in the open ocean because small plants need to first to be eaten by uh, small carnivores which then need to be eaten by slightly larger carnivores. And um, this eventually um, makes up to the fact that if we wish to eat a tuna then we are actually eating a top top carnivore which would be the equivalent on land of the eater of a wolf eater. Currently scientists only have a very incomplete inventory of the species living in the oceans. So if we only count macroscopic or so multicellular animals and plants about 250,000 of them are described by scientists um, but we know that we only have uh, that we have not sampled all of them. So we know that at least a million await scientific discovery, description, let alone um, an analysis of their function within the ecosystems. Even more stunning is the microbial diversity, which we only uh, get to know recently through genetic and genomic techniques. And here there were stunning discoveries of new, completely new bacterial uh, life forms of very primitive bacteria called the archaea that are probably ancestors of the very early life forms restricted to anoxic environments, to reducing environments similar to hydrothermal vents and also very strange types of viruses that are half uh, self-sustained living and half being true parasites have been discovered in recent years. Scientists have also established quite firmly both through experiments and through observation that biodiversity is very important to marine ecosystems, both in terms of making them productive, but also in making them stable against human perturbation. So an utmost goal, a prime goal for any management measures must be to avoid local uh, decrease in species and also genetic diversity and also to protect a critically important population of species against human disturbances. If it comes to food in the oceans, humans are still behaving like hunter-gatherers about 10,000 years ago on land. So we harvest wild populations of fish and other invertebrate seafoods um, and many of them are severely depleted. Then there's mariculture, so the cultivation of marine organisms in net pens uh, or mussels and, um, and algae on rope cultures. And this sector of food production is increasing at a very high rate. However, many of those um, uh, maricultures are not environmentally sustainable. For example, because we feed fish then to fish. And we have to be very careful not to repeat the same mistakes that have been made in industrializing our terrestrial agriculture in the oceans. Other than provisioning of food, the oceans do many, many services to humankind. Um, some of which are nutrient retention, so the prevention um, of nutrient pollution. Some are coastal protection, if you think of corals, where the coral reefs protect low-lying lands along the coast. And one of the largest services, the, uh, the ocean biota, due to humankind, is carbon sequestration. Through the photosynthesis, the carbon that comes from excess fossil fuel burning uh, is incorporated into living organisms, into plants, be it small phytoplankton or larger plants, and thereby effectively, effectively removed from the biosphere so that it cannot uh, develop its harmful greenhouse effects anymore and about it is estimated by scientists that about a third of that carbon that we overproduce every year is taken up by the ocean and by ocean life thereby considerably uh, decelerating the rate of greenhouse gas warming. Unfortunately we are witnessing an unprecedented decline in marine life and in marine biodiversity both through direct uh, harvesting through pollution um, and you can all trace them back to our unsustainable way of living and to the uh, mere increase in human population density which multiplies of course the per capita effects 
of an unsustainable way of living. So clearly a better management of marine ecosystem is needed. Um, there are now a number of positive examples that have led, for example, to the recovery of coastal vegetation on coral reefs, to the recovery of seabird and marine mammal populations and of some exported fish stocks through proper management. And they have also led to decreased nutrient runoff from land. So these are all positive examples um, we uh, should analyze to learn but clearly there's a lot to do to much better manage marine ecosystems so as to protect them in itself but also to enhance their vital function they pro uh, provide to humankind.